Here's Cairo Santos now, ready to get this one started. And we are underway from Miami. This is taken just shy of the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And the defense closes quickly there. He'll get maybe a yard to the 33. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Tua sets up to pass it. Open man is Waddle complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not to, it came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards, and that'll bring up second down. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. A handoff running left is Mostert. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Jake Bailey now. The speedster Dante Pettis back deep to return. And did he put that on a dime? He did. Wow. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Talk about angling that one perfectly, partner. We know the ball can bounce anywhere, especially how it's shaped. But that one, as if on cue, goes out of bounds perfectly. Perfect indeed right at the one-yard line. Excellent coffin corner punt. So here are the Bears banked up to start their initial drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you've really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space.
They'll run it here. This is Deontay Foreman. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And give him a lot of credit there, but even more credit to the guys up front. In that situation, you know it's going to be a stacked defensive front. And to be able to gain that much yardage, that's a big win for the guys on offense. Yeah, they were just about standing on their own goal line, so to get a few yards there. Under pressure, and down he goes in the end zone, and that's a safety. Well, we, we thought these two defenses, they might come to play. One has already come to play here, a safety for the opening points of the game. Brandon, let's file this play away, because if it turns out to be a tight game, who knows? This could wind up being the difference. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. Taken in at the 22. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football. But still, they've got the lead here. And now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On play action, here's Tua. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes that's quite a surprise to a guy playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Here's a handoff to Mostert running left, and the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. On is Jake Bailey to send this one away. A 40-yard punt, no return. And they will take over first and 10. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And a big no-no last time, a safety to make this score 2 nothing where we stand now. So, see if they can atone for that mistake. You give up points, but on the flip side, the positive side, after you punted the ball away or kicked it away. Defense held. Defense held for you. So, there's a little bit of relief there. Now they know they can get back out on the field, run their offense, and try not to put their defense in a bad spot again. On first down, Fields. They'll set up the screen to Herbert. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. To throw again on second down. Fields. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. He's at the 40. The 20. Touchdown, Chicago. D.J. Moore. An 80-yard touchdown. And the Bears have taken the lead.
And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we could at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. Yeah, this is a guy who runs with such balance and control. I mean, he went through that early contact just like he was driving over a speed bump. And he's able to continue his way downfield and wind up in the end zone. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact on the next-gen stats. Santos with the extra point, and the lead is up to five. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. After the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. This is taken just shy of the 10. Miami set to take over. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. To and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. Second down, here's Mostert again. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Once again, it's Mostert. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. It's second down. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Forced out to his left, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Demarcus Walker credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DN. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well, and that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest-paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Throwing now is Tungavailoa. Dancing to his left. And going deep for Hill. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Throwing back across his body. Picked off by Jaquan Brisker. And the Bears are going to take possession of the football. And I think this is a situation where a quarterback coach in the sideline is going to talk to a signal caller and say, listen, it's third and long, and it's still early in the game. Let's not force things here. If we don't feel good about it, let's just check something down and pump the football. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. On first and 10, it's Herbert. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. 
We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a second and four coming up. Now Fields going to keep it running left. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean also just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Fields. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet. He's going to have the first down. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think? A guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something, and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. Now it's Fields off the bootleg. He'll get that complete to Khalil Herbert. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, try to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Again, Fields. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. A shotgun snap, Fields. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Slants are so tough to cover because everything happens so fast. But sometimes it happens too fast for the guy catching the ball because all of his movements have to be quick off the line of scrimmage, and then all of a sudden the ball's right on top of you. And maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself there. And a lot of times coming in with good pace, and he dropped it. Throwing on third down, Fields escaping the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Gain of nine that time on the scramble. One yard shy of the marker, and it brings up fourth. That looked great when he first took off because, in my mind, there was room to run, and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. They snap it to Fields. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And the Bears are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. We always talk about big-time players make big-time plays in big-time moments. I think that fourth down qualified. That was a heck of a throw. Foreman. We'll take it in. Touchdown, Bears. They go I formation. Fullback leads the way for the touchdown. Sort of a lost art, isn't it? It really is, but sometimes when you're able to bring it back and use it against other teams, they're not prepared for it. They haven't seen it in a while, and now you gain an advantage, and we just saw that advantage result in a touchdown. Now the point after try for Santos. Yeah. 
And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Now oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jaquan Brisker. And the Bears are going to take possession of the football. So rare to see any quarterback toss back-to-back -back interceptions in the NFL, regardless of status or experience. Whether it's him personally or just the offensive game plan, I think this defense is reading something out there, and they're holding the upper hand. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. So from the 36 now, first and ten. Now Fields, buying time to his left, and that is incomplete. I'll give them credit, winning that first snap and forcing an incompletion. They're hoping that'll deflate the offense a little bit after they took the field charged up after taking over after a turnover. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A handoff for Herbert, and he'll be taken down at the 34. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Here's Fields. And the throw there going to be incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. No fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. On the right hash, officially, this will be a 51-yard attempt. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright. And this will stay a 12-point game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Two in the Dolphins offense getting ready to take over once again. And he's had his struggles here early with a couple of interceptions as he'll try to refocus with a first and ten to start this drive. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. I don't think any of us were surprised that they decided to start this drive on the ground after the last two drives ended in interceptions. Unfortunately, though, not a lot going on on that first play. Yeah, I think the anticipation was felt also by the defense. Second down, here's Mostert again. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. The Dolphins on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This time it's third and three. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. Yeah, the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Bears' offense now gets set to head back onto the field. 
Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Starting on the ground with Herbert. And yeah, nice yardage right off the bat here as he's up to about the 24-yard line. And a tackle credited to Deshaun Elliott, the safety. That's a really good game right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle everyone's going to want to touch the football be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage second and five now fields got his man complete over the middle it's more third catch of this first half for him and this one is a first down Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Now a first down throw. Fields. That's complete to me. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B. One starts with an S. Ball security. And they preach it. They, they have it up in, in, in meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock. Up the middle they go with Moster. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Looking to pass to a that one caught by Tyreek Hill. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. As long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old, reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage, as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage, because man coverage, they're typically running away from someone and not worried about traffic coming out on the other end. Meanwhile, to his throw here, going to be caught by Wilson. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. So second and four from the 22. Here's Tua. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Mostert, and he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. One more time with Moster, and he takes it into the end zone for the Dolphin touchdown. Raheem Moster punching it in from a yard away. And the Dolphins get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this power football 
hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And this is back to a five-point game. On first and ten, here's Fields. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Fields now to throw. Complete to Mooney on the slant. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Fields on first down. Complete to Deontay Foreman at running back. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. That turned into a very well orchestrated play right there. Going to work his way out of the backfield to the right. And after he looked it in, he found plenty of space to roam and picked up big yardage. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. To the air again, Fields. Now he steps away, and he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the right hash, this from 53. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar. Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. They'll start by running the option to the right. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. First play of the drive, a first down run. Well, that sets you up for whichever way you want to go. Do you come right back and run the football again because you've got them on their heels? Or do you play chess match with them, break tendency, and go play action and go for the big shot? They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. Back to throw, Fields. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Here's the option going left on second down. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. The decision to keep it turns out to be a good one. 11 yards in the first down. they go Foreman and he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29 yard line
So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. On second down, a run with Herbert. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. They'll go again with Herbert. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. It was Raquan Davis with the tackle. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you're talking about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a <laughs> big time play there. They'll go option to the short side. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. The decision to keep it turns out to be a good one. 11 yards in the first down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And the Bears are gonna have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. They'll run with Foreman. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Deontay Foreman with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Santos now to add the PAT. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Being chased out left. And he'll just get rid of it. The goal is certainly to try and make a big play happen and climb back into this game, but you have to be careful. If you overdo it, you could turn it over and hurt your team. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today.
That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Chicago offense set to get started. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. to throw his fields. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Out routes are always timing routes, and if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second, because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. Now it's fields. Able to hit his target, Claypool. And he will have the Bears' first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first down, it's Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Komet. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. That's another beautiful throw right there. It gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. Here's the option, running right. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. And that's another big-time run. And it sure looks like the leverage game is being won by the offensive line. They're the low man on just about every snap, and they're winning, pushing back the defensive front and creating great space for their runners. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's a give to Herbert. Christian Wilkins there defensively for the stop. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. This offense so far on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Here's Fields. 
And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Emmanuel Agba that time able to drop him for a loss. That time, finally, a measure of revenge as they get him down behind the line. It almost felt like relief, didn't it? Because with the success he's had throughout this game, you'd almost expect him to get free and pick up 10 to 15 every time he takes off. Not in that case. That has to feel good for the defense. Now Fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. And this a 39-yard attempt. Santos' kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. So an important one there as they widen their lead in this fourth quarter. All right, partner, help me out with the math here. Make sure I am on point, because the way I see it, the other guys still need two touchdowns. Let's go! On first down, Tonga Vailoa. Oh, he's going up top for Wilson. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Tua sets up to pass it. And the grab by Croft. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Coming up on second and seven. Two are going to throw. It's a short and a loose football. And this is picked up by the Bears. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. We just saw the dilemma for every coach. You want them to fight for the extra yardage, but somehow continue to cover the football. Oftentimes, when you fight that hard, the ball becomes exposed. And defensively, it's obvious they're trying to be more aggressive. First tackle, a little too aggressive. Second one, though, they strip it loose. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. A run by Foreman to start the drive. That's to about the 28, second down coming up. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? On second and seven, Fields. And it's a fumble. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you've probably talked about since training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll run here with Herbert. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Fields. Fighting a safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, 
that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. So the ball moves from their own 41 to the other 41 here for first and 10. Now Fields. He's got the connection to Moore. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. They're pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Here's Fields. And that will be incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. They'll run for it. This is Foreman. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. A big pickup of 12 yards on fourth down to keep this drive from stalling. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage. The stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. Again, it's Foreman. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. This defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in, and all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, rake it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Third and ten. Expect a timeout right away if they can't stop them here. On third down, Herbert. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. Fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. This to make it a three-score game late. Santos' kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? Well, 
And after the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. And out come the Dolphins now. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You, you figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here. You've held a team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. Throwing again on second and 10. Tua. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Looked like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. It's his guy out in the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about, in your progressions, you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down, a nice, safe throw and a good one. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a nine-yard gain, and it'll keep the drive moving. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up the first. Defense should be aware for that, right? They should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. Another catch there for Waddle. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Again, they will throw it with Tungabailoa. They complete it to Hill. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. Working with a second and three. Now Tua. He's going to drop this underneath to Mostert. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 23. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out.